On this edition of ME Report. It's more of the circumstance of how uh, those events transpired. Two deadly shootings in Huntington and one shooter is still on the loose. I think students just kind of want to know uh, where we're at in the process. The search continues for a new president of Marshall University. It seems like yesterday we just walked off the field and Boke and here we're back at it again starting tomorrow. And Marshall football is hitting the turf for spring practice. ME Report starts right now. From the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, your home for complete Marshall University news. You're watching MU Report. Two deadly shootings in just a few days, both just a mile away from Marshall's campus. Good afternoon, I'm Jesse Starkey. And I'm Kayla Markham. Right now, police are looking for answers. 21-year-old Joshua Martin was a student at Marshall. He was shot and killed March 18th on Donald Avenue in Huntington. Police say Martin was shot six times. His body was found unarmed and naked in Michael LeMaster's front yard. LeMaster has been charged with murder in the case. The second shooting took place just a few blocks away on Holderby Road in Huntington. Police say Rudy Magana was shot multiple times when he was walking in his driveway March 19th. Magana is a graduate of Marshall and manager of Rio Grande restaurant near campus. No arrests have been made and police have no leads. Right now the search is on to find Rudy Magana's killer. Friends and police are looking for answers and asking for help from the community. MU reports Morgan Wright spoke with detectives and is live with the very latest on this investigation. Right now, the person who killed Rudy is still on the loose. Police are looking for leads, asking neighbors to call in tips or hand over any security video they may have from their homes. Meanwhile, Rudy's fiance, who is seven months pregnant, is begging for help. A business owner, a fiance, and a soon-to-be father are some of the words that can describe Rodolfo Magana, known to his friends as Rudy. Police say Rudy was shot and killed outside his home on Holderby Drive. Neighbors heard gunshots and called 911. No arrests have been made at this time. Rudy drove home from work, but this time he didn't make it in the door before he was shot and killed while his pregnant fiance, Emily Miles, was waiting for him inside. Emily describes him as gentle soft-spoken and kind-hearted. Emily is very active on social media, begging anyone with information to come forward. Police Chief Joe Siccarelli says HPD is currently waiting on forensic evidence from the autopsy report to come back. You know, one of the steps that, that, that we're taking here at the police department is to uh, create a cold case investigative squad so that we have dedicated officers who are assigned to look at these unsolved serious crimes and to continue to move those forward. Right now, Siccarelli says there are no suspects, which makes community members uncomfortable as a murderer is still on the loose. It's pretty terrifying, especially for me being from Huntington, not being somebody who had just come here. And in all my years that I've grown up here and been here, it's nothing that I've ever had to face or like wrap my head around. For now, Emily continues to plea for answers via social media, asking anyone to give tips they may have. If you know anything about this shooting, you can call the Huntington Police Department and remain anonymous. Reporting live, Morgan Wright, MU Report. Morgan, thanks. Our team coverage continues now as 21-year-old Marshall student, a man friends say was the life of the party, is dead after being shot multiple times. Police have arrested the man they say pulled the trigger, but as I found out, that doesn't make it any easier for Josh Martin's friends to handle. None of it makes sense. None of it comes together. And I think that's the hardest part for all of us is just, you know, like asking why. Friends of Marshall student Josh Martin want answers. The 21 year old was shot and killed in front of this house in Huntington. Police charged this man, Micah Lamaster, with the crime, but there are still pieces missing. Karima Negmuj knew Martin for eight years and says when Martin wouldn't answer her calls, she knew something was wrong. I texted Josh and I was like, hey, what are you doing? And he didn't reply. And I was like, you're OK, right? He didn't reply, so I called him and he didn't answer. The shooting happened at around 3.20 a.m., but Josh Martin's body was found on the pavement well after sunrise in front of this house. Right now, police are working to find out what happened before the shots were fired. 
in this case, very, very important to thoroughly look at the, the crime scene, at the physical evidence, at the uh, chain of events that happened uh, there that morning. I think this might have been character day or something like that, but this is like perfect explanation of him though like what in the world like he just showed up in this like big hat with these fake chest hairs drawn martin's friends say he was a jokester full of life and a class clown you never saw him without a smile on his face they also say unanswered questions make their grief even more difficult master will be released from jail and placed on home confinement following his preliminary hearing Turning now to Marshall's campus, the search for a new president is very important for the university's future. There's only one problem. Students just aren't up to date with the search. But now MU Reports Colton Jeffries has details of a new website that can keep Marshall students up to date and voice their opinions on who should leave the school. The search for the next president of Marshall University is in full swing, with the Marshall Board of Governors searching for the man or woman who will take interim president Gary White's place at the start of the next school year. But to many students, the presidential search is far down their list of priorities. I think it's something that a lot of students on campus don't really take into account for. You know, studying just takes up a lot of my time. If I were coming back next year, I would be really interested because I would want to know who our president is, but I'm graduating in May, so I've lost some interest. But a new website has been put in place to help students keep up to date with the search a little bit easier, featuring a timeline of the search as well as search-related news. According to SGA president and search committee member Duncan Wagaman, this site is not only useful for students, but for himself as well. I think students are going to find that very helpful. I know I personally, even someone who's a part of the process, still go back and read that and try to catch up on all the other things that are going on around the process. Duncan also says that student involvement is crucial to the search. We want to find out what people want in another president, whether, you know, people represent different type of entities, so like what they like their president to deal with those entities. So I would uh, suggest them to come to me and express those opinions. Students can also use a website to leave feedback on who they think the next president should be, a process that's as easy as picking up their phones. Colton Jeffries, MU Report. Thanks, Colton. If you want to check out that website, it's on the bottom of your screen, marshall.edu slash presidential search. Here's one thing college students are up to date on, beer. The craft beer industry in the Mountain State has really been growing in the past few years. Now a new bill passed by the state legislature will allow businesses to purchase more local brews. Emmy Report's Tim Carrico has more on what this means for you. Ryan Hastings produces about 60 kegs of beer a week at Black Sheep Brewing Company. He says the craft beer industry is gaining traction in the state. And with the help of a new bill, more people will be able to taste his concoctions from home. We chase complexity and we try to, to chase our passion and, and deliver the best, most consistent product that we can. Under a bill passed this legislative session, any licensed retailer can sell up to four growlers a day per person. It's a change many customers are thrilled about. It's interesting. Uh, the flavors are different. Uh, Concepts behind it are different, the styles of beer are different, so it's just a, it's a myriad. Previous laws prevented breweries and restaurants from filling growlers, but now that's about to change. It was just always a convenient thing. It's, it's other states do it. I mean, from the West Coast, moving this way. There are only a handful of breweries in West Virginia, but many people are optimistic the new legislation will allow the craft beer culture to develop and flourish in the state. In the same manner of supporting any local business, supporting your local breweries um, is, is supporting your local community as well. The law takes place July 1st. Tim Carrico, Emmy Report. Hastings says Black Sheep plans on having a special event for the big day. Empowering women to protect themselves. Women's self-defense is a popular class on this campus and as Emmy reports, Sarah Connors explains, now the police officer who teaches it is in charge of empowering women across the state. The class is empowering. The class is, it's changing lives. Marshall Police Officer Scott Ballou has been teaching women's self-defense on campus for 15 years. Now he's in charge of teaching women across the state of West Virginia how to protect themselves. For me to do that, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty good feeling, knowing that a woman comes in and she's not real sure how to 
or if she's faced with violence. She's not sure if what, how she would react or, you know, and then you give them options and you teach them that they can take care of themselves. And Ballou is originally from Florida and came to Marshall on a baseball scholarship. He says he is thrilled at the opportunity to represent the state that he now calls home. It was, it was a, a no-brainer. I mean, I was like, well, sure, I'd love to be a, a state representative uh, of West Virginia and have, and have Marshall's name on that. Ballou's students say that they couldn't think of a better fit, and his style of teaching shows just how dedicated he is to this program. Scott's really great at RAD because he's just so passionate. He just wants you to know what you're, what you're capable of and your skills, and it really shows through in the way he teaches and how excited he gets every day coming into class. Our class isn't the only one. It's, you don't have to take this one, but I think all women you know, should at some time take a self-defense class so they can have that ability you know, to defend themselves. Ballou encourages every woman to take a self-defense class so that they will be prepared for any type of situation. Sarah Connors, ME Report. Officer Ballou teaches self-defense at Marshall's Recreation Center every semester. Turning now to sports, big things are happening for women's basketball and spring training is underway for football. ME Report's Rob Engel joins us with a look at what's going on. Rob? Everyone's talking about spring training, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, Marshall women's basketball is doing some big things. The women's team pulled off an upset in the first round of the NCAA tournament, a tournament they had not played in since 1997. So, uh, I was a little bit in awe of it. Um, glad to be a part of it, yeah. and uh, really happy for our program, really happy for Marshall. The first game, Marshall scored the first postseason win in, with the NCAA era and won the game 81-79 against top-seeded Northern Kentucky University. After the win, the team traveled to Macon, Georgia to face off against the fourth-seeded Mercer University. Although the Herd dominated the court for 36 minutes of the game, they couldn't hold on to the lead. The Herd lost 73-71. The team also made history by playing the latest into the season since the 70s. Seems like yesterday we just walked off the field and Boke and here we're back at it again starting tomorrow. But uh, I know I'm excited as a head football coach to, to get into spring ball and I know our kids are excited. We've had a great winter. Coming off one of the most successful seasons in Marshall football history, the herd thundered onto the field at Jones C. Edwards Stadium for the sp start of spring football training. The herd ended 2014 with a 13-1 record. It was a season that resulted in a Conference USA Championship title and a bowl game victory in the inaugural Boca Raton Bowl. This season, the Herd will be hurting for graduated seniors and record-setting pairing quarterback Rakeem Cato and receiver Tommy Schuler. Coach Holliday says it's important that the team develop a solid offense by challenging players to step up into these positions of leadership. More big news for Marshall football on the horizon as the team is gearing up for a scrimmage at the Greenbrier against West Virginia University. Awesome, Rob. I know I went to uh, practice last week, and it was a little bit weird without Cato and Schuler there, but I'm sure they'll pull through this season. Yeah, and I had the chance to go to the first practice of the season as well, and I just know that the players are really hyped up for this 2015 season. Awesome. Thanks so much. Restaurants in Huntington are teaming up to promote the city, giving people great deals on delicious meals. It's all part of the city's restaurant week. The Chamber of Commerce set Restaurant Week up to give folks in town a chance to try the menu at places they might otherwise not go to. Lunches at participating restaurants like this one, Jim's Spaghetti, are just 10 bucks, but the real great deal comes at dinner. Three course meals for just 35 bucks at restaurants like Huntington Prime, Savannah's, and Uno's. You can find a list of all the restaurants on the city's Huntington's Facebook page. You know, that's, that's pretty exciting for places like Savannah's and Uno's that most college kids probably can't afford. Yeah, I've actually never been to Huntington Prime, so hopefully this would be the time to do it when it's a little bit cheaper for uh, college students like us. <laughs> yeah, get a, get a good steak for a, a lower price. It's pretty exciting. Definitely. Well, that does it for this edition of MU Report. Thank you so much for watching us. We'll be back in two weeks on this West Virginia Public Broadcasting Station. Remember to check us out on our Facebook page to see what we're working on every day. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.